Good evening. We invite you to watch the English News on the Central Television Channel of Donna Province. Continuing the seventh session of the 15th National Assembly, on June 24th, the National Assembly voted to pass the revised law on the organization of the People's Courts with a high approval rate of 94.25%. The revised law on the organization of the People's Courts was passed with 459 out of 464 deputies present voting in favor, account for 94.25% of total deputies. The revised law on the organization of people's court was developed to promote judicial reform and to continue building and affecting the socialist rule of law of state of Vietnam in the new period. The law will create an appropriate legal framework to further improve the quality and efficiency of court cooperation, promote digital transformation and build electronic courts. The law comprises nine jobs and one of two articles. Notably, under the revised law on the organization of the people courts, the provision regarding provincial and district level people's court remains as stipulated in the 2014 law on the organization of people's courts. Concerning the collection of documents and evidence in handling criminal, administrative, civil cases, and other matters under jurisdiction of the courts, the law stipulates that the courts are responsible for guiding, requesting, supporting, receiving documents and evidence, checking and verifying the authenticity of documents and evidence according to the law. The law stipulates that recording on court proceedings and meeting is allowed. Video recording is only done during the opening of the trial, the meeting, the sentences, and the announcement of the decision. The above mentioned oral and video recording must be approved by the chairman of the court, the session, and relevant people according to regulations. The National Assembly Finance and Purchase Committee has proposed that the government study the imposition of value added tax on goods circulated through e commerce platforms with a value under $1 million. According to the National Assembly Finance and Purchase Committee, with the explosion of cross-border e-commerce, the volume of small value cross-border transactions has multiplied in recent times. On average, 4 to 5 million orders are shipped daily from China to Vietnam through e-commerce platforms, with each order valued between $1,000 to $3,000. With this volume, approximately 45 to 33 million US dollar worth of goods is transported daily from China to Vietnam, equating to about 1.3 to 1.9 billion US dollar per month. But no taxes are collected. A representative from the Vietnam Tax Consultants Association also noted that under the government decision 78, goods shipped from abroad via express delivery methods valued at 1 million Vietnam dollar or less are not subject to value added tax or import tax. Clearly, in this scenario, Breaking down orders results in tax inequality between domestic goods and goods shipped from abroad. The import and export department under the Ministry of Industry and Trade cites the latest forecast from the United States Department of Agriculture (USDA), which predicts that global pork consumption will reach 131 million tons by 2030, an increase of 7.2 percent compared to 2023. In Vietnam and the United States, pork consumption is expected to increase by 28.3% and 11.7% respectively. Additionally, Vietnam is among the top 10 countries with the high pork consumption in the world, according to estimates by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development (OECD). Vietnam's pork production is expected to reach 4 million tons in 2025 and 4.7 million tons in 2030 with an average annual growth rate of 3.1%. Currently, domestic pork production only meets 95% of consumption demand. This war is significant potential. Vietnam's pork market is not yet standardized, with more than 90% of pork products on the market lacking a brand. Meanwhile, consumers are increasingly focused on traceable products. 
Therefore, the livestock sector has great potential and is attracting strong investment from both domestic and international sources. Vietnam meat industry is ready for substantial growth as meet the demands of increasing population. On June 14th, the Franklin directly planned the U.S. after Ukraine attacked the city of Sevastopol on the Crimea Peninsula with U.S. provided attack missiles, resulting in at least four deaths, including two children and injuring 151 others. Speaking to the press, friendly sport person Dmitry Speskov stated, We fully understand who is behind this. According to him, Russia knows well who provided those weapons and supply data for the missiles. Peskov added, As media representatives, you should ask my colleagues, the press secretaries in Europe, and above all in Washington, and why their government are killing Russian children. When asked about Russian response to the incident, Peskov reiterated President Vladimir Putin's statement from June 6th, saying he could deploy conventional missile capable reaching the U.S. and its European allies if they allow Ukraine to use long-range Western weapons to strike deeper into Russian territory. Peskov asserted that U.S. involvement in the conflict leading to Russian casualty would have consequences. However, the exact consequences would unfold over time. Previously, Russian officials and President Putin have repeatedly warned about the risk of conflict escalating involving the world's largest nuclear powers. In an effort to achieve a ceasefire in Gaza on June 24th, Israeli Defense Minister Yuar Gallant met with the U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken in Washington. The U.S. State Department reported that Secretary Blinken and Mr. Gallant discussed efforts to secure a ceasefire agreement and the exchange of hostages, emphasizing the need to take additional steps to protect humanitarian workers in Gaza. The two sides also discussed plans for a post-war management of Gaza. Regarding the conflict between Israel and Hezbollah forces, Blinken stressed the importance of avoiding an escalation of the conflict. For his part, Mr. Gallant reaffirmed his royal commitment to ensuring the release of hostages held by Hamas. He stated, His royal primary commitment is to free the hostages. Additionally, the alliance between Israel and the U.S. has been immensely important over the years. You just watched the English News Bulletin on the Nile Province Essential Television Channel. Goodbye and see you again.